save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Nerd Robot with their video Abrahamic Religions Compared Judaism versus Christianity versus Islam. For people that see my face for the very first time, I just recently reverted to Islam, to be precise, four weeks ago, just before Ramadan. Coming from a Christian Orthodox background myself, I of course compared the religions before I made up my mind. And now, from a Muslim perspective, I have to say the terminology Abrahamic religions is of course laughable. Because if we talk about Abraham, we have to ask ourselves who he was, what he was. Abraham most certainly was not a Christian. Abraham most certainly was not a Jew either. So what was he? He was a man that submitted his will to God. What does Islam mean? It is the submission to God. That is the translation, the literal translation of the word Islam, submission to God. And this is the only religion Abraham could have followed prior to Judaism and Christianity. So therefore, I make the bold claim that Christians and Jews do not base their religions upon Abraham. Anyways, guys, I'm super excited for today's video. With no further ado, let's have a look. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are three Abrahamic religions that share certain similarities and differences. Or are they? Judaism, which originated around 2000 BC, is the oldest, followed by Christianity in 26 AD and Islam in 610 AD. These three Abrahamic religions share a common historical and spiritual foundation, with each branching out into distinct beliefs, practices, and traditions over time. The god worshipped in Judaism is Elohim, a single, all-powerful, and transcendent being. In Christianity, Jesus is the central figure of worship, believed to be the Son of God and the Savior of humanity. And God as well, as the graphic here in the background shows. Christians worship Jesus by saying he wasn't just a man, he was fully man and fully God. This is how Christians justify to worship a man and not discard it as paganism. However, if we look into the tradition of Judaism that Christianity is based upon, we can of course see in the Old Testament that God most certainly is not a man. It says it clearly in the Old Testament. And this is why just by this graphic alone, you can see that the Jews and the Muslims are worshipping basically the one God with certain different conceptions. However, the Christians in the middle are most certainly not worshipping the same God because their God is Trinitarian in nature and moreover, he manifests himself in the man Jesus. In Islam, Allah is the one and only God whose message was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. 
Important figures in each religion who are not worshipped include Moses in Judaism, who led the Israelites out of Egypt and received the Ten Commandments from God. Sure. St. Paul in Christianity, who was a major contributor to the New Testament and spread Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. Oh, yes. And Muhammad in Islam, the last prophet who conveyed Allah's message to humanity through the Quran. Yes, and here it's very important to realize that, yes, it might be true that St. Paul spread Christianity, but did St. Paul spread the religion of Jesus? This is truly the question here, because the central figure, St. Paul, never met Jesus. Never met Jesus. Paul was a Jewish Pharisee that was persecuting the early Christians. The early Christians were resemblant of the Jews, of course, because their tradition sprung out of the midst of the Jews. He, however, told them that they do not need to obey the law any longer, that they can eat whatever they want. They can eat pork as well. Paul invented the Christianity that we know nowadays. He spread it through the Roman Empire, which he was employed for. But who conveyed all his message to humanity through the Quran. The holy books of these religions are the Tanakh for Judaism, a collection of sacred Hebrew texts, the Bible for Christianity, comprised of the Old and New Testaments, and the Quran for Islam, believed to be the direct revelation of Allah's word to Muhammad. Each religion has a designated place of worship, the synagogue for Jews, the church for Christians, and the mosque for Muslims. The architecture, rituals, and services in each place of worship vary according to the religious tradition and the cultural context. Of course. The prayer leaders in these religions also have distinct titles and roles. A rabbi in Judaism who serves as a spiritual guide and teacher, a pastor in Christianity who leads the congregation in worship and provides spiritual counseling, and an imam in Islam who leads the Muslim community in prayer and offers religious guidance. Prayer rituals differ among the three religions. In Judaism, Amidah is the central prayer performed while standing and consisting of blessings and supplications. Christianity's liturgy is a structured public worship service with prayers, readings, and rituals that vary according to denomination. Salah, the obligatory Islamic prayer, is performed five times a day and includes physical actions and recitations from the Quran. Yeah, and moreover, it includes prostration, of course, that he didn't mention here. And then we have to ask ourselves, how did the prophets worship? If we look into the Bible, we will see that Jesus fell on his face. So this is why the Islamic claim is that all the prophets were Muslim, including Abraham, of course, because they worshipped God in a certain fashion. How did they do that? They went on their knees, they prostrate, they bowed to God. And this is what the Muslims do to this very day. It is the only religion that kept those traditions. Greetings among believers convey peace and goodwill. In Judaism, shalom expresses the wish for peace. In Christianity, peace be with you conveys a blessing. And in Islam, assalamu alaikum means peace be upon you. No. With 14.8 million followers of Judaism, 2.4 billion followers of Christianity, and 1.9 billion followers of Islam worldwide, these religions have a And by watching this video, we already passed the 2 billion mark. ...significant impact on the global population. Israel has the highest Jewish population, the United States has the highest Christian population, and Indonesia has the highest Muslim population. Wow. Each religion has its own sacred... This was really a shock back in the day because I always thought that the Muslims are Turks or Arabs or whatnot, but ultimately I came to the realization that no, the biggest population of Muslims nowadays are actually Asians. Pilgrimage sites. My favorite people. The Western Wall in Jerusalem for Jews, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem for Christians, and the Kaaba in Mecca for Muslims. These sites hold deep spiritual yes. significance for the faithful and attract millions of pilgrims annually. Major holidays in each religion include Yom Kippur in Judaism, a solemn day of fasting and repentance, Christmas in Christianity. Just one day. This was surprising to me as well when I researched Judaism and I found out that Yom Kippur is only one day of fasting. And in this instance, I'm not even too sure if they're fasting off food as well. However, I do know that they're fasting off technology, communication, etc., etc. Christianity celebrating the birth of Jesus and Eid al-Adha in Islam, commemorating the sacrifice of Ibrahim. And as you can see there, yet again, Islam is the only religion that has a holiday for Abraham. Festival of Lights, Easter in Christianity, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, and Eid al-Fitr in Islam, marking the end of Ramadan. The concept yes. of the afterlife varies between the three religions. In Judaism, the promised land is Olam Haba, often described as a peaceful place amongst the clouds. In Christianity, the promised land is heaven, often portrayed as a kingdom above the sky. In Islam, the promised land is Jannah, a beautiful garden filled with delights. Similarly, places of punishment also differ. In Judaism, Gehenna is often described as a gloomy and scary place. 
Christianity refers to hell as a place full of fire and eternal suffering. In Islam, Jahannam is a dark place with no light and black colored fire. I actually didn't know that Jahannam is a dark place, but it makes absolutely sense if this is true, because coming from my spiritual experiences, I can say that there is the light of God that illuminates everything. And if we're thinking about hell as the ultimate separation of God, of course, it would be a very dark place. In Judaism, Satan serves as an agent of God, responsible for testing humans. In Christianity, okay. the devil is commonly portrayed as a fallen angel. Yeah. In Islam, shaitan represents a rebellious figure, acting against God's will. The concept of a false prophet or deceiver exists in all three religions. Hmm. In Judaism, the false prophet is Mashiach Shekhar, who falsely claims to be the Messiah. In Christianity, so that is Jesus for them. the Antichrist wow. is a figure of evil opposing Christ at the end times. In Islam, the Dajjal is an evil being causing chaos and deceiving many before being defeated by the true Messiah, Jesus. Each religion emphasizes specific deeds and virtues. In Judaism, the greatest deed is tikkun olam, the duty to build or repair the world so it can be a better place. In Christianity, according to which standard is the question? Christianity, love and compassion are paramount, including loving one's enemies. Sure. In Islam, the greatest deed is jihad, the struggle in the name of God and sacrificing personal enjoyment to help others. Yes. Violation. And of course, all the Westerners watching shook when they heard jihad, huh? I knew it! You differently. <laughs> In Judaism, the worst violation is idolatry, which involves betraying God to worship other deities. That's good. Christianity identifies seven deadly sins. Gluttony, lust, greed, wrath, sloth, pride, and envy. Which is an absolutely beautiful concept to identify those seven sins. However, by not putting the emphasis on idolatry and how dangerous it can be, the Christians ended up worshipping three in one. In Islam, the That's worst violation is shirk, worshiping shirk. more than one god. Yes. Throughout history, great kingdoms which is idolatry again have been established under these religions. The greatest Jewish kingdom was the Kingdom of Israel, which existed from 1047 BC to 930 BC. The greatest Christian kingdom was the Byzantine Empire, lasting from 330 AD to 1453 AD. Wow. The greatest Islamic kingdom was the Abbasid Caliphate, existing from 750 AD to 1517 AD. Influential rulers have also emerged from these traditions. King David was the greatest Jewish king. Constantine the Great was the greatest Christian king, and Mehmed II was the greatest Muslim king. Mm. Notable women also hold important roles in each religion. In Judaism, Sarah, the wife of Abraham, is highly regarded. In Christianity, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is venerated. In Islam, Khadija, the wife and mentor of Muhammad, is highly respected. That truly depends what you're basing it upon, because yes, no doubt, Khadija is revered in Islam. She is respected, obviously, but so is Mary as well. If you look into the Quran, Mary is the most mentioned woman in the Quran. Wife and mentor of Muhammad is highly respected. Special foods are associated with religious observances and rituals. In Judaism, marar and karoset are consumed during Passover. What is that? What is Mara and Karoset? All right, I googled this real quick, and as you can see, those are bitter herbs like horseradish and romaine lettuce. All right. In Christianity, bread and wine symbolize the body and blood of Jesus during the Eucharist. Yeah, and as you can see, we have alcohol as a special food. So now I'm asking you, how can you have alcohol as a spiritual food? Honestly, no matter which perspective you take, you always come to the conclusion that alcohol is wrong for you. From a biological perspective, from a sports science perspective, from a health perspective in general, alcohol is bad for you. But even if you would look at it from a spiritual perspective, alcohol is dampening your consciousness, it turns you into an animal. It activates the animalistic body and shuts off your human consciousness. So how can you use this as a spiritual food, as a special food? Islam, dates Doesn't and honey are commonly consumed to break the fast during Ramadan. Yeah, which makes perfect sense. Dates and honey have glucose and have minerals and enzymes. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are three Abrahamic religions that share a common historical and spiritual foundation. Or are they? Despite their similarities, each religion has distinct beliefs, practices, and customs. Understanding the nuances of these religions helps shed light on their role in shaping human history and culture. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. As I said in the beginning, man, my suspicion got confirmed. Why are they all Abrahamic faiths when only Islam has a holiday for Abraham? When only Islam practices what Abraham practiced, bowing, prostrating, worshiping one God alone with no additions. Why are they all Abrahamic faiths if the Christians say that Jesus is God, if the Christians say that we should drink alcohol and eat bread? It is 
only Islam that redirects the focus away from everything else onto one God by proclaiming that it is shirk if you have certain additions to the faith, the faith of Abraham. Yet again, this is what the Quran stresses. The Quran says, they say, be Jews or Christians, so you will be guided. Say rather, we follow the religion of Abraham, inclining towards truth, and he was not of the polytheists. And this is really what it boiled down to for me. As I said, I'm coming from an Orthodox Christian background. Therefore, yes, I compared all those Abrahamic faiths. But moreover, I compared it to the other religions as well. Buddhism, Hinduism, even shamanism and certain other spiritual practices. And when I saw that those practices don't lead anywhere, I returned to the Abrahamic faiths. But if you compare them fairly, justly, and you see what they are talking about, I see no other option than coming to the conclusion that Islam is the correct one because Islam is the only religion that keeps the tradition. Of course, Christians will say that is not correct. We keep the tradition of the altar. But who invented that altar? It was, of course, based upon Judaism. So you keep the tradition of the Jewish invention. Did Abraham have an altar? Did Moses have an altar? Of course not. If you really look into the Abrahamic faith, you will see that Abraham was his own ummah. That's what Islam proclaims. He was his own community because his people stood against him. They didn't want to follow him. So he was left alone on his own, worshipping one God, going even so far that he would sacrifice his only son. Can't you see that this is the most powerful statement made for worshipping one God and saying no to the earth, saying no to the dunya, saying that there is nothing more important than God, even my firstborn son, I will sacrifice for you. So what was his religion? Was Abraham worshipping Jesus? Was he practicing what the rabbis are practicing nowadays? Certainly not. Abraham submitted his will to God, aka Islam. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.